morning, good morning. What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday to you. Hope everyone is having a great, great day. As as most of you know, who follow me, who 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 communicate with me, who we've had a chance to work with, um, my 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 schedule, my routines are pretty regimented. I'm gonna get up in the morning. I'm gonna go to the gym. Uh, I'm going to write in my 12-week target book. I'm going to plan out the day before what I'm going to do today. Everything about me is fairly routine. Matter of fact, I'm so routine. I remember one person reaching out to me and they said, they said, I got to ask you a question. Aren't you concerned with being so routine that if somebody wanted to find you and do something to you, that they wouldn't have a problem finding you? And um, I thought it was funny because it, maybe in the life that I lived before, worrying about somebody finding me is, would have been a concern. Uh, but this life I live right now, I don't have enemies. I don't have anybody that I'm concerned with. So it's the reason why I make my location or I, I make my whereabouts known is because I want to be very consistent with what I do. And part of my consistency is social media. Part of my consistency is helping other people. You know, there's probably not a day that goes by that I don't get a message or somebody that walks up to me in the gym and says, you're a huge influence. You, incur you showing up every day encourages me to be here each and every day. It encouraged me. Seeing you show up encourage me to keep going and I get those on a regular basis and I'm very 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 humbled by it very humbled by it so humbled that I keep doing it and I'm and, and one of the biggest statements that I've been making lately is we are living in some of the best times depends on who you're talking to right because you have you have some people that will stand here and they will literally watch what's going on and do absolutely nothing. And then you got some people who will do something or they're they're so affected by what happened in their past that they're scared to make a move left or right. They they just can't do it. They're in they're in shell shock. And then you got somebody like me. I'm I'm okay with making some decisions when the things look a little bit murky, when the waters don't look exactly clear, right? And I sit here and I, one of the things I do, I like watching CNBC, I like watching Squawk Box, Jim Cramer, uh, uh, Ray Dalio. I like listening to these guys. I like listening to what they're talking about. I want to hear what is their take on the current state of the market that we're in. And I got to tell you, it's the, it's the funniest thing because none of them knows what's going on. Absolutely none of them knows what's going on, which therefore makes it a very fair and equal playing field to those who participate. So yes, it is a very good time in history right now because there are things happening. There are movement. Put it like this. If you were a surfer, as long as there was some amount of, of movement inside of the water, it could be a little movement, it could be high tide, it could be whatever it is. As long as you're a surfer and your board is in the water, you're having a very good day. Does the day get better when the high tide comes in? Absolutely, because now you get the thrill of the rush of riding the wave. But it doesn't take away from the fact that you're still having a good time. The only time when you're not having a good time is when you're standing on the sideline observing. That's the only time people are not having a good time. And too often, we get caught up in what everybody is saying versus doing what we feel like we should do, right? We're too motivated or we're too, um, or we're, 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 we're too trained. We're too trained to take everybody else's opinion and advice about what it is that we should be doing. And we're not conditioned enough to follow our own instincts. And so if I said to you, hey, we're living in some of the best times that I, I mean, that I could even imagine. I mean, there, there's so much money. There's so much opportunity. There's so much uh, room for business to grow, to, to expand. And the other person might say, yeah, but interest rates are high. 
I say, well, interest rates are high, but it's helping buyers be able to buy more homes because now most people are pulling out the market. They just don't want to have no parts of it. And we're negotiating better deals than we ever could at any other point in history. We're negotiating better deals. Yeah, but I'm going to wait until next year. And so they push off what they should do today for tomorrow because it's more comfortable for us to just live in the excuses that we make for why we're not taking massive action, evasive action, productive action. I had a call over the weekend and it was it was asking me to to do something and i'm ordinarily if you ask me to do something i don't have a problem with doing it but i'm going to ask some questions why what's going on depending on the level of our relationship some people i might not ask i might just say it's done i'll take care of it i do have those kind of relationships with people that it's not, it's not a whole lot of people, but a couple people where if they said, hey, I need this, 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 done. Because we've built that relationship and I know that they're not going to squander away. There's no, there's no, there's no misunderstanding about how this is going to be handled. And so this individual, you know, called to ask me for some things. And I, you know, I said, you know, I asked a couple questions and then I came back and I said, hey, let me offer you something better. And it was some advice. It was some advice. This individual was so offended that I did not give them what they wanted, but yet I, I felt like I gave them something way more valuable. And this individual was so offended that they had the audacity to say that I had lost my way that I had forgotten where I came from. And I really thought I, I really thought that that was funny because the first time somebody wants to try to control your movement, the first thing they try to do is try to get you or convince you that you are on the wrong path. And you have to remember something. How often are you leading your own destiny? Or are you letting somebody else lead you? And because even though I didn't give this person what they wanted, I knew for a fact that I had given them a million dollars worth of game. But again, some people see information less valuable than resources, than finances. Some people see this as the best time in history to become successful. Others don't. Perception. What do you value? See, I value my own opinion, not above those I trust, not above those who are doing better things than me, but I value my own opinion. I value my own thoughts. I value my own instincts. I trust them. And I value information. And because I value these things and I put them above anything else, I offer them to others. I make the claim that this is the best time in history. Others make the claim that it's not. I make the claim that information is more important than resource or, or, or finances. Others would claim they want the money. I don't, I don't remember if it was King Solomon or it was, a, it was King David where God charged it to him and said, I like this person because they could have got on their knees and they could have prayed for anything. They could have asked me for all the money and the riches in the world and they asked me for wisdom. 
they put wisdom above everything else. They could have asked me for anything and I would have gave it to them, but they asked me for more wisdom. <sighs> Folks were asking for the wrong thing. Don't ask for food, ask for a seed to plant that food. Don't stand around with your hand out asking for money, ask for information on how to start a business. Don't look at the market as the market is bad, but look at the market as the market is very good and how can I take advantage of it? Why are there so many people getting rich in what we're considering a very bad market? But yet, at the same time, the people with the poor thinking are steadily getting poorer. I was inside of my, my stretch session right now. I go every Monday for one hour. And there, there's different people in there getting their, their body stretched out. I do it because I'm lazy. I'm not going to stretch myself, so I pay somebody to do it for me. Might as well. And as I'm sitting there, I'm listening to the conversation of the employees. I'm listening to the conversation of the employees. And they're not bad. I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm not judging one way or another. I don't want to be judged. So I'm not judging. But the conversation is, is revolving around the fact that they don't make enough money. And how they have to work multiple jobs. And how this job doesn't pay enough. And, they, and they're having this, co this internal conversation in an in a open environment. So everybody can hear it. So while the one guy who is getting his body stretched is talking about owning 100,000 office spaces, 100,000 square feet of office spaces, and while I'm sitting here thinking about how good my business is doing, the conversation outside of me is about how things are not going well, but never about how they're positioning themselves, but more so how they're just not, things aren't the best for them and how they have to struggle to try to get by. And I look around, I simply say, have I been given something that you have not? Because I, I definitely, I, trust me, I am not born from privilege. I do not have generational wealth. Will I create generational wealth? 100%. 100%. But at the point where your life is now being dictated by somebody outside of it, or at the point when somebody else is trying to tell you that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, at that point, you need to understand that somebody is trying to control your narrative, your future. Because we were all given the same opportunity. Now, will, how can I put this? Now, will other people look at my children different? Yes, absolutely they will. Because I will set the foundation for their financial wealth. But I won't set the foundation for their financial wealth where they're looked at as if they're some spoiled rich kids. They will be looked at as they are some disciplined, uh, uh, God-fearing, God-loving, family-oriented people who have money and finances and resources. But that's because dad, daddy, made the decision that I was going to stop the curse of being financially impoverished. That's a decision that I'm making for my children going forward because I don't care to listen to the narrative. And like I said, I listen to Squawk Box. I listen to CNBC. I listen to all these different brilliant minds. And, and I got to tell you, if I listened to them and I took their advice, I'd be just as confused. I'd be buying crypto, selling real estate uh, up in the end. I'd be all confused. I listened to it. Because it's confirmation that they don't have it figured out any more than I do. And I'm, I'm, I'm just as hungry and eager to know how to play this thing called life as they are. The difference is, is they have a platform on TV that brings millions, hundreds of millions of people on there. Susie Orman, Jim Cramer. But they're not my competition. I am. The reason why I wake up and go and get it every single day is not because of somebody outside of me. It's because I know that there's a better person inside of me. 
Every day I show up at the gym, I'm getting stronger. Every time I look at my bank account, it's getting stronger. Every time I look at the decisions that we're making, they're getting bigger and better. And because I took possession of the of the decisions that we made. I wasn't I wasn't persuaded one way or another. I made the decisions that I made and I was okay with that because I've learned to trust my instincts. So I can say wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, we are living in some of the best times. And mind you, 90% of my business was generated from working with 100% of buyers. In the hardest market to get a buyer under contract, we did what we had to do. We made it work. We made it fit. And you have the same opportunity. You have the same choice. But if you keep standing on the sidelines of life, thinking that somebody's going to give you a quick pass or an alley oop for a free shot to the end zone, it's not going to happen. And then when you call on somebody like me who holds you accountable for the things that you're not doing, don't get mad that they're calling you out on your BS. Because do you want somebody that's going to prop up your excuses? Or would you rather have somebody that holds you accountable and say, let's go? Because time waits for no man. So yes, you're going to have equal amount of people saying, this is the worst time in history. I'm not doing anything. Then you're going to have people on the other spectrum that saying, this is the best time in history. And I got to tell you something, just like the surfer in the water, there is no bad time. There is no bad time for that guy in the water. The only time he has a bad time is when he can't get in the water, which is usually the day after it rains. But as long as he's in the water, he has opportunity. As long as you're playing the game, you have opportunity. As long as you're getting involved, you have opportunity. Because I don't buy this that anybody is created equal. I can't believe, I can't sit here and convince myself that we serve the same God, but yet some way, somehow, my God has chosen to give me more favor than you. No, God gives favor to those who show love back. And I'm committed to him. I'm committed to him. I, God, I'm, I'm all in. God, I'm all in. I, I'm committed. The reason why my family has favor in everything I tell, that's why I'm not worried about telling my clients anything wrong because I know anything I put my hands to is good because I'm committed. I'm all in. I'm not just showing up to church. I'm not just showing up to midweek. I'm not just going to intercession. I'm not just praying, but I'm teaching my family to do the same thing. I'm all in. So when I say it's a good time, that's because I know I have favor. But my favor isn't, it isn't like, it's kind of like saying you're a parent. It's kind of like saying you're a parent and yet you're going to treat one child different than the other. That's like saying God is treating me better than he's treating you. Think about that. Is it God that's treating me better or is it that I'm leaning into my faith harder than you are? The same measure of faith that we all have, that we all can exercise. So while there were people asking me for help, I gave them help in a way that I knew was in line with what I believe. You give a man a fish, he eats today. You teach a man how to fish, he can eat for life. I plan on teaching people how to fish. Because if I give you a fish today, you're just going to come back tomorrow and ask me for another fish. At which point do we stop this? Do we stop this, uh, this cycle? At which point do we say, hey, your legs are pretty strong and you can stand on them. Let me show you. And then we progress. So whether anybody watches my video, whether anybody calls... I'm going to keep progressing because 
my mind is focused on the right things. I'm disciplined in areas of my life that most people can't even fathom. But it's not like we don't all have that same ability. It really comes down to what do you believe in? And do you trust your instincts enough? Are you tied into the right circles? Because there's been people, there's been people left and right that don't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of that, that will push me away. And I'm looking at them like, why would you do something like that? Why would you push me away? I come from the school of thinking the more I, the more you help other people get what they want, the more you get what you want. Why would I not help more people get what they want? Makes sense to me. It's a no brainer to me. But again, it's how people think. And there was no way I was going to let this individual, I don't care who they were, tell me that I changed or I don't I forgot where I came from. I know where I came from and I know whose I am. The Lord, the, the most high, God almighty, that's who, that's where I came from. That's who I am. That's whose I am. And so as long as you know that you never have a reason to question where you'll be headed to or where you're going, you'll always know, you'll always have faith. You know where you're going, but trust me. You're going to get a lot of people that are sitting on the sideline. Me and my son, we were uh, we were sitting outside. I forgot where we were at. We were sitting outside somewhere. Oh, we took my wife to the dollar store to pick up some, some gift bags. Because they were going to some event. And there was a guy sitting by the door. The guy had to have been about... He couldn't have been older than late 20s early 30s early early 30s <laughs> he was just sitting by the door as the door was open he was just sitting there wasn't nothing wrong with me i know kane didn't have a, a roll a straw uh, 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 uh wheelchair nothing he was just asking random people for money as they were coming in and out the door and i'm sitting there with my son i'm thinking i'm sitting there with my daughter and i said why why is anybody just going to give you money because you ask for it. I think that's where we got it twisted. We have a sense of entitlement that because somebody else got something that they owe it to you. But what happened to you getting up and doing it for yourself? Because the day that you get up and do it for yourself, and, and I get it, I'm not insensitive to people who can't. I'm not insensitive to my elders. I'm not insensitive to my to my people who are physically disabled. I'm not insensitive to children. But what about the person that can? And what if the person that can did? Wouldn't that person be looking at the next person like, why aren't you up doing it? Because if I got to get up at four o'clock in the morning, what I look like just giving you a handout when you can get up at four o'clock in the morning too. That's not called being insensitive. That's called holding more people accountable for what it is that they need to do. What they should do. You're living in the best times in history. But the the way this flips and becomes the worst time in history is for the person who does nothing. The person who does nothing. God. I feel for you. Because you're listening to anything and everything that will make you feel comfortable except yourself, which is giving you a strong signal. And I know this. Whatever's inside of you is giving you a strong signal or a strong indicator that right now is the time that you need to move. Right now is the time that you need to push the ball forward. You need to go. And you're opting to not. That's on you.